Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Right here is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, or DPU for short. And I've been using this consistently for three months straight, so I thought I'd give you guys an update on how it's been working and how I power the loads in my house. Now, if you haven't seen one of these units before, this is called a power station. It's kind of like a plug and play home backup. On the top, you have the brains of the unit. This is the inverter and charging system. You also have a display showing what's going on currently with the unit. Now you have multiple outputs. This has a 7,200 watt, 240 volt split phase inverter, meaning you can power up to 7,200 watts of devices using this output. You also have multiple AC outputs here and USB ports if you like. Now below the head unit, you have batteries. Now each one of these batteries is a six kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, and you can add multiple batteries. For example, in this setup, I have two of them for a 12 kilowatt hour system. One of the biggest advantages of the DPU is the fact that it can take in a ton of solar. You have dual solar charge controllers. This one's good for 4,000 watts. This one's good for 1,600 watts for 5,600 watts total. One thing that stands out about the DPU is how quiet it is. You can see that the fan is currently running and I can be in the same room recording a video without even hearing the fan. That is really cool. We're taking in almost 2,200 watts of solar with almost 500 watts going out. The battery is at 82% state of charge and we're not even at midday yet. Now there are many ways to use the DPU, so I thought I'd break down how I'm using it currently in my home. Now I have the 240 volt output connected up to a Reliance Controls transfer switch. This is a 10 circuit, 50 amp, 240 volt transfer switch. This allows me to run critical loads during a power outage or even during the day to offset my electrical bill. Now it's important to make sure that if you are going to use a transfer switch, you wanna select the most important critical loads in your home. These are some of the things that I'm powering in my house. I'm powering my upstairs refrigerator. I'm powering my upstairs microwave. I have it also powering my gas fireplace blower and igniter. I have it connected up to various outlets and lights throughout the upstairs, including the bedroom outlets and living room outlets. I also have it downstairs connected up to some circuits powering my downstairs refrigerator and downstairs microwave. The transfer switch is also powering the circuit that powers our clothes washer so we can wash our clothes if the power is out and also our living room where we can watch TV. I have it connected up to my home office so I can work if the power is out. And also I have it connected up to my home internet so that I can have communications if the power is out in my neighborhood. Now, one of the biggest challenges to installing the transfer switch was finding out what each one of these circuits did in my main panel because they were not labeled properly before I started this project. Now, this tool right here was an absolute lifesaver when it came to organizing my main power panel and figuring out what each circuit breaker did. This is from Klein Tools. This is their digital circuit breaker finder. So you have a receiver and a transmitter. Now you take the transmitter right here, you go and plug this into an outlet, then you go to your main power panel and you scan your circuit breakers until it starts to flash and beep. And that means that you found the circuit that that outlet is connected to. Now this comes with a bunch of different attachments. You can connect to light bulbs or light sockets. You can also connect directly to uh, power outputs from like a dishwasher or something like that. So this helped me organize my main power panel very quickly. Now I actually installed this transfer switch from Reliance Controls on my own. It took about two and a half hours on a weekend and the hardest part was probably cutting out the drywall and routing the wires underneath back over into my main power panel because it's all drywalled. Now some people have exposed power panels, so probably not that big of an issue. Now you do have to cut full power to your house when you are working on one of these. So keep in mind, you do want some way to run your refrigerators as that powers out. Now, when it comes to charging the DPU, in my use case, I am charging this with solar panels 99% of the time. So I thought it'd be helpful to show you guys the solar arrays that I have connected into this and how they're set up. Now there are two solar arrays in my backyard that I have dedicated to the DPU. The first one is this 1600 watt array on top of my carport. Now I really enjoyed that project. I have a full video on it. I'll include that down in the video description, but there are four 410 watt solar panels wired together in series. Now the second solar array that I have connected in is this array on top of my shed. This is 975 watts. These are three 325 watt panels wired together in series. Now they both actually use the same roof access point, which they come down to the wall into some DC circuit breakers and then down under the ground back into my house. 
Now this third array here is actually kind of an experiment. These are ETFE coated solar panels. I don't really use this on the DPU. It's kind of like a long-term experiment to see how long the ETFE coating lasts before it breaks down, but it's been almost a year and they're still uh, putting out really good power. I use this to charge up extra batteries and power stations that I'm testing. Now, I just wanted to show you guys a breakdown of what's happening with those solar arrays. So we're seeing about 2200 watts input and I have a base load of around 500 watts. So this will jump up if I'm running larger appliances, but usually I'm around 500 watts going out and the battery is almost full. It's midday and then we're at 97%. Now this is the EcoFlow Power Insight tablet. It breaks down the power input and output really well. So I just wanna show you guys this really quick. So currently we've gotten 8.68 kilowatt hours from solar today. Right now we're getting 1.38 kilowatts from one array and 827 watts from the other array for a total of 2.2 kilowatts. The battery is almost full, it's at 99% state of charge. You can see the power going out is right around 500 watts via the AC output. Another really cool feature of the Power Insight tablet and the EcoFlow Smart App is the data logging that this does. So let's take a look at it. You can break it down per day, week, month, or year. And I'll just show you some of the information, um, the breakdowns of the months that I've been using this. But first, the input for just today, we're getting 7.56 kilowatt hours from solar input. And on the output, we have 5.46 kilowatt hours so far. And I love that it breaks it down per hour. So if we go down and check out the months, uh, we have it set to May here. Now each one of these lines is a day. And so far for half the month, we have a total output of 102 kilowatt hours. And for the input, we have 118 kilowatt hours. Now, if we break this down by the month of April, give us a good idea of a full month of usage. So I did go on a small little trip here, that's why this is off, but for the full month, it's 242 kilowatt hours of solar input. If we go look at the output, it's 215 kilowatt hours out from the battery. Um, so you can see a little bit of cloudy weather here. That's why those days are lower. I love that you get a breakdown of the actual ports and the power usage per those ports. Let's go take a look at March. Also a full month of usage there. Get a couple days of cloudy weather, but for the most part, quite a bit of power output, 187 kilowatt hours. And for the input, we're at 213 kilowatt hours. Um, must have had some really good sunny days here. Uh, looking back in March, the sun was not nearly out as much as it is now. And if we go look at February, we're going to see the same thing. The days were shorter. So I did start using this mid-February every single day. And for February, it's 72.43 kilowatt hours from solar and 59 out going out from the battery. So really cool breakdown to see what's going on on the data logging. I mean, I guess we could look at the year so far. So, so far I have pulled... 564 kilowatt hours from this unit and for solar input 646 uh, kilowatt hours of solar so really cool to be able to track this it's going to be interesting to see how the year plays out with the data logging in this unit now one thing that i've noticed while testing the ecoflow dpu is how compact it is compared to other power stations that i've tested on the channel and i really like these 90 degree adapters that go between the batteries and the inverter now, if we compare the size of the DPU to the Bluetti AC500, this has a 5,000 watt single phase output. And below that, I have three B300S batteries for three kilowatts each or nine kilowatt hours total. Now, these adapters here are what connect the inverter and batteries together, and they take up about a foot of space on the side of the power station. Now, this thing is quite tall and it is a little bit tipsy while I'm moving it around. Now to get split phase output on the AC500, I'd have to have two main head units and additional batteries. So you can see the size difference on the EcoFlow DPU. You have a 7200 watt split phase output and you even have 12 kilowatt hours of capacity and it takes up less space. Now I thought it'd be helpful to explain the discharge pattern that I've seen while testing this over the last three months. Now first, what is my constant load? Well, I usually see around 350 to 650 watts while I have these 10 circuits enabled. That's kind of my parasitic constant load. And then obviously I'll see spikes in power as someone turns on a microwave, a vacuum, the garage door opener, uh, cooking appliances or whatever. So usually I see that type of load. Now, if this is fully charged and it discharges overnight, when I wake up and check it in the morning, it's around 55% state of charge as solar starts kicking in. 
And if I have a good sunny day, it gets up to about 100% shade of charge around 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon, and then it sits full until the sun goes down. Now, the pattern that I've noticed while using this in the afternoon after it's fully charged is basically when this hits 100% state of charge, it will cut off the solar, and then it will discharge down to 98% state of charge, and it'll turn the solar back on to charge it back up to 100%. So it's kind of going between 100% state of charge and 98% state of charge as a cycle throughout the afternoon when it's full. So in my case, I don't have too much of a draw because it only discharges 50% depth, and then I have plenty of solar to get it charged up um, by mid-afternoon. Now, during cloudy days, I do have some issues. Sometimes I have to turn off some of these circuits because I just don't have enough solar um, to keep the loads running, especially to charge it up after um, being discharged overnight. But you'll have to look at your constant load if it's higher or lower than what I'm using on my load. Maybe you'll have to purchase more batteries or maybe you can get away with one battery. It just depends on what you're using your power station for. But hopefully that gives you a good idea of what you can expect while using this power station. Now, if you want to learn more about the DPU, I have a full in-depth review video where I go over the smart home panel, um, connecting to a transfer switch, or even just powering this via the sockets on the front, running your loads that way. And I also do extensive testing on the full unit. So if you are interested in that, I'll include that link to the video down in the video description if you guys want to check that out. But basically, this video today was about uh, providing an update on how it's been working. So hopefully this information has been helpful for you. Now I will say um, it's actually been working really well. Um, only in the very beginning did I have an issue with uh, solar panel charging. Um, it was actually right when I got this unit, I provided feedback to EcoFlow support and they pushed a firmware update um, shortly after and that has been resolved. So I haven't seen any solar issues, um, inverter issues or anything ever since I've been running that. And you guys can kind of see that from the data logs that I showed you earlier that this thing has been running nonstop for three months. Next, I wanna talk about the current pricing for the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra. Now looking at their website, if you purchase the base model with one inverter and one battery, you can get a price of $57.99. Now that's right around 94 cents per watt hour. Now they also provided a special discount code for my viewers. Now, if you add two 220 watt bifacial solar panels to your cart at checkout, you can actually apply this discount code and it'll give you those two solar panels for free. So if you're already in the market purchasing one of these units, why not get two free solar panels? So I'll include the link to that and the discount code down in the video description. Now that's basically everything that I wanted to cover on the three month follow-up for the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra. Now, if I ever do have any issues, you guys will definitely find out. I'll post those updates on my YouTube channel, but everything so far has been working really well. Now, I'd love to get your guys' feedback on this. What do you guys think about the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra? If you have one of these, what has been your experience? With mine going through a transfer switch, everything has been working really well. It's kind of a dumb setup because the transfer switch is manual, but the output works really well and it just powers these circuits. So let me know what type of feedback you guys have if you're using the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra with your smart panels or even by itself without a transfer switch. Now I'll recommend a couple other videos that you guys can check out. Thank you so much for watching. Please smash the thumbs up button on the way out. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one.